Welcome back to another Futures Trading Recap for Wednesday, November 20, 2024. The time is 8.16 a.m. Eastern as I'm making this pre-market part of today's video. I'm Sam, and I trade the E-mini Futures. This part of the daily recap video is where I show the levels of potential support and resistance in the SPY that I've identified for the day. The opening bell is more than an hour from now. During the open session, these levels will serve as a basis for how we enter trades in the E-mini Futures. Notice I have a couple levels that are in a lighter blue color. These levels could be areas where price could react, but I don't have more than one or two reasons that lend credibility to their importance. So they're kind of there for reference. They may be tradable areas, depending on other variables that may or may not develop in real time during the open session. Also, there are two zones on the board today. Those are the pairs of levels and dashed lines. One zone is at the bottom and the other is near the top of the chart. These are essentially one big level, and what I like to do is to scale in with E-mini contracts if the SPY gets into zones like this. And really, I should go on record and say that every level and zone that I identify each morning deserves to be thoroughly vetted before trusting it for a trade in the E-minis. One of the tracking logs that you'll see later in this video is called Playing by the Rules Log. In it, every level that is put on the board each morning is traded according to a set of rules that I have. So that log is a good barometer of what things look like over the long term when every level is traded the same way. The other log tracks my own trades, and those can be a little different. Not different in the sense that I'm breaking any of my rules, but different in that I might try for more points or scale in or out with larger position sizes, depending on how good I feel about a level. One last thing I want to say here in this intro is that there is a good chance that there won't be a recording of any live trades that I may take today. This is because I'm experimenting with a couple different trading platforms right now, and I'll likely be bouncing back and forth between them trying things out. And that probably wouldn't make for a good, cohesive recording of live trades like I usually do. So we'll see how that goes. After the closing bell, we will revisit this same chart to talk about any trades that were taken during the day and look at how the day's profit or loss stacks up in the bigger picture and dig into the tracking log. There is nearly three years of data in the log since I've been keeping track of all my trades using this strategy, so the profit curve is fairly smooth at this point. Also, if there are any clues or signals that develop today that might give us an idea of where the market is headed next, I'll touch on that in a forecast part of the video. So those are the main ingredients of these daily recap videos. I'll be back after the closing bell and we'll talk about what happened with these levels and our trades. Catch you on the other side. It's now 8.25 p.m., we had a flat day, and they gave a couple trades at this level here, which interestingly enough, I was somewhat ambivalent about this morning. 587.90. The market thought it was important. That's pretty obvious now. And if you're playing by the rules, there were two official base hit trades at this level. Before we talk about these trades, I'll mention now that there is no recording of my live trades today because I did not enter any trades myself today, not at least not in TradeStation. When I got things set up in the office, it was right around 9.48 or so when I got in front of the computer and I saw them finishing this bounce right here just in time. So I watched it. I wasn't about to chase the trade. And I watched them come down, kind of find a bottom somewhere above this zone, come back up, attempt this level. So it was about 11 o'clock when I shut down, experimented with another trading platform, Ninja Trader. I've never used them before. I'm thinking about opening an account with them. The charting tools seem pretty good so far. Anyone out there have any opinions of NinjaTrader? I'm just curious. For what it's worth, I made a handful of experimental trades in the demo SIM account that they set me up with. I actually pulled about $4,200, but I wasn't really following any type of process. I was trading four contract positions just on the fly. When I saw opportunities and all the trades I took worked out fairly well. So it was fun, but I can't count those in the tracking log, of course. It was just a simulation account anyway. So where was I? Uh, the official trades today. So that's one. That's a long trade at $587.90. Adjusted or not, it worked well. The other trade was when they got underneath this and they were coming back up. It's a short trade. This needed a few minutes to develop, but there were plenty of points if you were able to hold for longer, for more than a base hit, or maybe scale out. By the way, this first attempt here around 11 a.m. was not a near miss. They did It did not negate the level for later. So shorting here was your play. Just one time, though. At least that's the way I do it. If you were strictly playing by the rules, they reacted several times at this level. So maybe, you know, multiple shorts were possible, but at what point are they going to bust through? You don't really know. That's when they happen. But there may be ways to anticipate that, but I just find that once I trade a level once successfully, I'm probably not going to attempt again unless there are very good reasons. 
So when the SPY got back up to 590.20, it was after my line in the sand. It was 337, 1537. You may or may not know this by now, but one of my rules is to not enter trades within 30 minutes of the closing bell. That has kept me out of trouble many times. So this was a no trade playing by the rules, but for what it's worth, it, a short trade here around 3.37 p.m. would have worked well, pretty quick base hit, but we're not counting it in the log. So that's how you would have traded the levels if you had them from the morning. I hope there were traders out there who pulled a few dollars from the market today if you chose to use my levels. A few comments on where the SPY is on the daily chart. So we had pretty good timing when they pulled up, tried to make a reversal candle, and maybe you could claim that it is. Volume was just average off the 20 period moving average. But then instead of continuing, they kind of came back and gave a doji candle on similar volume today. So there could be maybe a couple divergences because if I were to look at the IWM on the daily chart, they bounced a little stronger uh, the other day and they came down harder into this zone we already talked about. So they're coming out of that. They could go higher tomorrow, but if we go back to the SPY chart and then look maybe a, at an hourly chart, there's something pretty interesting here. They're consolidating inside this breakdown candle Timing's right for them to, to find some overhead resistance around this area. You have a 50-period moving average coming down, so this could play out to the downside. They're at 588.51, so they're coming down already. But they'd have to get down below this 200-period in this area for them to kind of be in trouble, or at least to fall a bit farther. If they get above and close hourly candles above this 50-period, and then to get above this gap here, then the bulls could be in charge at that point. Probably won't know much until tomorrow. On the tracking log, the first one, of course, is the playing by the rules. You can see the one uh, level that was hit and traded twice for eight points total. And then on my trades, the Sam's trades log, no trades taken. And there's the two levels that were hit. I had a title on a video the other day that said something like 240% return in 2024 so far. I just want to qualify what that is. So this is on my trades. This is 2024 to date. Let's just have some fun here and look at what this is. So... Here is through today, and this is the 243%. This is, you know, all of 2024 with my trades, many of which you have seen. If you just go back and look at the, at the YouTube videos, you'll see many of these. This is based on the assumption you're starting with a $50,000 account balance, and you're trading two contracts at each level, which is entirely feasible with current margin rates. I noticed it was right into June. Let's see. Here's 2024. January through June, it was before June when you would have hit the 100%. So let me just get this exact. It was between January 1st of this year and 3rd or 4th of June. So this is January 1st to the 3rd of June. Yep, there's the 100%. Just want to point out. So if you started out with 50, traded two contracts, halfway through the year, you would have doubled your money. This is $50,000 on top of your original balance, hence the 100% total rate of return. So I just wanted to point out that that's where the 240% came from. So that's a wrap for today. I believe we had another good example of how these levels work and trust in the process is your key to consistent profits. Hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for the support and thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow morning with new levels. We'll do it again. Have a great rest of your day.